Hello, welcome back. It's Michael Kölling again. Welcome back to our Java programming series, uh, revision of Java programming concepts. And this is the first of our request episodes. Um, you will have seen if you followed the episode sequentially that last time I have said um, I, I would take requests from you about what I should be talking about. And the first suggestion that came in was from Oliver, who's, who asked me to talk about enumerations or enums, as Java calls them, um, and um, suggested that we could have three different states, susceptible, infected, and immune, for our person, and that this would represent the state of the person better than what I have done in my current implementation. And it's true, that is a very fair comment. It would be a much nicer and clearer um, representation to do that. Um, and so I will take this episode and the next one, in fact, to talk about enums and how and why we can uh, improve the um, quality of our implementation. In, the, in this episode, I will um, introduce the basics of enums. And then in the next one, I will do a little bit more sophisticated things and show you some a um, little bit um, extended functionality that you can do with enums. So let's get started and have a look at this. Thank you, Oliver, by the way, for the suggestion. Um, it's a really nice idea to do. Um, and so um, let's go ahead and implement this now. So let's look at what the problem is with our um, project at the moment, or rather the opportunity for improvement. Um, if we look here in our person class at the status that um, this person can have. If we think about the process of the infection and healing, uh, we have three different um, phases that a person can be in. They can be pre-infection, so they can be um, you know, not, not having been infected yet. Let's call that susceptible, because um, that is the state in which they are susceptible for, to the virus. Um, then the next second state is if they are currently being infected with an active infection, um, so they are, they are ill at the moment. And then the third state that they can, can reach is um, once they come out of the infection, uh, they are healthy again and they're immune now. So there are these three states um, that we have represented here when we run this in our simulation by the different colors of the people. So the blue ones are the ones that are susceptible, the orange ones are the ones that are currently infected, and the green ones are the ones that now are immune. Um, if we investigate how we present that in our uh, data, in the fields in our person class, we can see that there's just one Boolean that shows that they're immune, um, but there is no single variable that actually indicates very clearly those three states. Um, if we think about how these three states are represented, it is actually a combination of the is immune boolean and the infection um, integer that we have here. If we are not immune and the infection is zero, that combination shows us um, that they are susceptible. Um, if the infection is greater than zero, then we know they are currently infected. If they are immune and the infection is zero, then we know they are post-infection and are now immune. So we have to actually understand um, quite um, in, in some level of detail the combination of these two fields to know what the state is. And it is, um, in fact, um, even more subtle than that, because if the infection is greater than zero, we know they are infected, um, in that case, um, should immune be true or false? So what if infection is 100 and immune is true? Or what if infection is 100 and immune is false? Um, they are sort of two different possible combinations. Um, and we have to know how to interpret them. In fact, if you have been um, carefully paying attention throughout the whole project, you um, will have realized that the way we have done this is as soon as the infection gets set to something larger than zero, we set immune to true immediately. And we need that actually, that is important for the correctness of our simulation. Um, if we have infection being positive, um, greater than zero, and immune being false, that would actually be an error in the program. So we have to treat these very carefully 
we have a combination there of our two variables that in our implementation is actually illegal and we have to know this and we have to keep that in mind um, to avoid errors being made. Um, so a maintenance programmer that comes along and makes changes um, to our project here may not necessarily know the details in this um, um, to this extent and there is a danger of getting the sequence of these three status um, transitions wrong. So we can now make this more explicit and make it clearer by not using a combination of a boolean and second field to represent our three different status possibilities but make that explicit to have a um, to have a an explicit field um, for the status so we can say here for example instead of saying is immune um, we can make here a field that can have three different values our susceptible um, infected and immune they are the three values the way that many people do that if they want three values instead of two because if you want to if you want just two values it's clear what you use you use a boolean if you need three values what I've often seen people do is to make an int and three constants so for example say um, they say int status and then they create three constants and you create a constant here where you say private um, static final int um, and then you give them names so you say for example susceptible is zero and then you make a second constant and you say um, infected is one and immune is two and then you take this constant and you assign it here as the value um, for your um, status. So um, that having these three values, so I, I just, I didn't write my two other um, constants here because I don't actually want to go through with this. Um, this is just for discussion purposes. So I'm not, I'm not going to type that all out. Just imagine you had two more constants here for um, infected and immune. So this is one way how you can do that so that the status now can have three different values it can have susceptible and then my other two constants here immune and infected um, and that is a bit better than having um, a boolean and relying on the combination of that boolean with a separate field but this is still not as nice as we can make it because um, by making this an int there is still a possibility that we can have a value here that is illegal then because even though we intend to always only assign these three values susceptible and immune and infected there's nothing technically stopping us from assigning a different illegal value to our status variable because it is just declared as an int and we are not getting the guarantee that it cannot take another value because if you make it an int with three constants there's always some clever programmer who comes along and wants to transition say from susceptible to infected um, and they just for example um, do an integer increment on the status they just say status plus plus knowing that this will go to the next um, state but then again um, if you're not careful you can actually set the status not to just to 0, 1 and 2, but to 3 or 5 or 500. Um, there is nothing technically stopping us, so it is not type safe. Um, it is not type safe in the sense that here <clears throat> I want only three different possible values for this, but the type that I'm using, int, allows many more possible values and I don't get a guarantee from the compiler that the value is always one of the three values that I want to use. So a much better way to do that is to use an enumeration type. An enumeration type is a type <clears throat> where I can specify exactly the set of values that I want to use and I'll show you how to do that. So first let's go to our main window. We want um, to introduce this new type. A type in Java is a class so we go here and we say um, in edit I want to create a new class and I call it 
um, what do I call it? I call it infection status. And that is a Java class. Oh, that's okay. And I get my class down here. So I get another class which is not a subclass of actor, which is an independent class. And I can open this and I can see I have a Java class here. But now the skeleton that I'm getting is for a normal class. And now in this case, I don't want a normal class. I want what's called an enum. An enum is short for enumeration. In an enumeration, I delete the um, skeleton that I'm getting for a normal class. And instead, I can just write a, an enumeration of the possible values. So um, because the values in enumerations are always constants, we write in them in capitals. Um, susceptible and infected and immune are my three values. So this here is my full class. Um, Okay, so this is my class and these, in, these enumeration classes in their simple form, this is a simple form, I will later show you a bit of a more um, sophisticated form, in their simple form are really easy to write. So essentially what you're saying is I now have objects of class infection status and I have exactly three objects and I name them susceptible, infected and immune. The Java system will automatically create an object to represent each of those values. So each of those um, named constants here is essentially constructing for me an object of type infection status and gives me a constant field with this name that refers to this value. Um, and then I can go, because this is a class and a class gives me a type. So here I can now use this type um, to create, oops, I didn't have my focus here, um, infection status. I can use this type as the type of my variable. And here I can now write infection status and I can, if I do my code completion, take one of the values out of my infection status um, possible um, enumeration values. So I'm saying status initially is susceptible. So now I have here a field called status that can take on exactly three possible values. I can remove this constant here again. Um, and this status now um, reflects very clearly readable what status I am in. So let's look at my code where that breaks. So the my static method is fine, my reset method is fine, my constructor still is fine because the isolation is of course independent of my status, whether I'm isolating or not, and the infection status itself is initialized correctly here during the declaration, so I don't need to change anything in my constructor. The act method is still fine, moving is still the same. When I'm infecting others, it's this, and, and here now, when I'm getting infected is where I need to make changes because here was my boolean. So if I'm not immune, um, and this one, that was one of the dangerous bits of code because here, if I'm not immune, um, you had to know exactly whether you the immune flag is already set while you are affected or not. And in fact, um, I had set it, but now I can say it much more um, clearly. What I'm exactly essentially saying here that I can get infected only while I'm susceptible. So I can now say while well, infection status dot no. I've others while status equals infection status susceptible. So that means while I'm susceptible, then I can get infected. So here, instead of saying is immune is true, I now say status now becomes infection status dot uh, infected. So I'm infected here now um, and that is fine. So this is now 
actually clearer and more readable because I, if you read this now it says if my status is susceptible then I'm becoming infected and my status is now infected. So this reads really well now. The is infected um, method here we can also improve. At the moment it makes use of the infection integer but in fact I can make that a bit more readable now by saying um, something similar to this. If my status is infected then I'm infected if status is infected. So that reads a little, a little bit more clearly. And then the healing um, I can now um, write a bit more clearly as well. Um, if we are infected, the infection goes down, if it reaches zero then I can now say in this case I say status is now assigned infection status dot uh, immune. So here we are now immune. So these are the three states that we have now. Um, initially right at the beginning we are susceptible, that's the initial state that it is initialized to. Then in the infect method it can become infected and then later when we're healing it can become immune. And the status at any moment, the status shows us um, clearly the state we are in. So if we try this out now, if we go here, it compiles, we can run this, the infection progresses, um, and if I hold this at the moment, if I inspect any of my um, people, I can right click and say inspect, I can see all the fields that are in this person, and many of the fields down here are internal to Greenfoot. So you can see that um, there is an X and Y coordinate, there is an image, there is um, various other information being held. But up here are the uh, fields that we added in our person class because the others down here are all inherited from the actor class. But the person fields, they are up here. And we can see um, there is now the infection status and that says infected. And if I look at this one, the green one, and inspect this, this says infection status immune. So here by just looking at a single field you can now very clearly see what status they are in. Um, that is the first bit of using uh, enumerations. Um, so that's the basic of enumerations. This is an enumeration type and this is how we use the enumeration type to make our code clearer, more safe, and more readable. Um, but that is not all. We can make further improvements. I will end here for now, but um, it gets even more interesting if we make uh, use of other capabilities of enumerations, and I will do that in the next episode. See you then. Okay, I'm stopping here because this episode is long enough already, but please come back to the next episode where we can see that even though the structure as we have it now is good, there is still more we can improve this and we shouldn't leave it in this state. Um, there's a very nice other um, improvement that we can make. But I'll leave that to next episode. See you then. Bye-bye.